eyeball the center, and you want to do a granny shot. You know how granny shots you do with two hands, not like basketball with one hand like this. You do one hand and try to bounce it off the rim. It'll be here and it'll be gone. So you want to eyeball the center and go right to the center. Like that. So, now if it didn't hit dead center, you're going to pat it over with dry hands. And in fact, make sure it's really tight. You might even try to pull it up with it. And if it sticks, well, then you're good. Good to go. If it pulls off, well, you didn't get a good tight seal. And when you start to play, then you might have big problems. So if I put a little water on my hands, now that it's centered, partly it's padded in the center, then you want to think of yourself as a machine. My right hand is my side lever. My elbow's braced. This elbow's braced. My head is over my piece, and my this part of my hand is on the top. So I'm like a machine. My side lever, which is my right hand, lets the clay go through the, through my fingers, not into my fingers. This is another way of centering. We'll talk about that later. But right now, a good beginning way of centering to really understand it, you're going to pull the clay off center to create it on center. This hand, all it does is keep it from growing too high. And it's going to create a triangle. So if I brace both elbows and have my hands braced, I've created this really strong bond. These potter's wheels, they have three, three legs on them for a good reason. That makes them strong and they don't rock and roll. And if you have three points of pressure with your body onto the, your piece of art, your um, hunk of clay, then you'll be able to be strong. Even if I was like a little third grader, I could do this if I knew where to put the pressure. So my elbow's braced, this elbow's braced, my hands are braced. Now I'm pulling towards me. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a little pressure and pulling this way with this hand. See how it got taller? My fingers are together, not apart. My thumb's sitting right here on the edge, not out here. Whoop, there went the clay. So you don't want that to happen. So to control the top of the clay, notice it's this part of my hand. I'm over here. Some people try to go this way, and what they're doing is they're fighting with themselves, and they don't realize it. So if I pull it off center, and then I relax, and I go gently, it finds itself on center. How do you tell if it's centered? Good question. So see if you see the circle, it's almost like a sucker. And here's a stick to the sucker. So if I put my finger to it, put music to it, go hmm. If it wasn't centered, it'd be going boom, 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 boom. See it? So maybe down here is not quite centered. So you need to have the whole thing centered. I like to keep my fingers even, pull towards me, hold still, hold still. If I if I jump off the clay, look at you see how it's centered? Watch me jump off. Like, oh, it stay centered? No, because all that pressure pulling it off center, see it? It appears centered. Uh oh. So it's how, it's not only how you pull it, it's how you release and let go gently. So it finds its own center. All right? Does that make sense? All right, so you're going to center it. This step is called centering. The next step is called opening. I like to pre-open or pre-set the opening by taking my hands together, my thumbs together, my hands on the side of the pot. I'm not like this. Elbows. Here I'm blocked. And I just press down with my thumbs right in the center. Some people will go all the way open and then they floor. The problem is when they floor this way, instead of bringing their thumbs to their finger, they twist their hands and then they've got this. They only make molds. That's all they know how to make. So if we preset here, then go, I always tell the kids, this is for peas, baby. <laughs> We've got all our fingers tucked underway, and then I close my fingers to make like a diving board. I help you remember it. And then my wrist is down, diving board, my elbow, my other elbow, my other hand, and I'm diving right into the center slowly while the wheel is going in fast motion. I'm going in slow motion. You want to stop about a quarter inch from the bottom. So, in my tools, I turn it in, and go down through the bottom, pull it up so you can see about how thick your bottom should be. If it's here, call me over, I'll try to put a bottom in there for you. If it's way here, you can go more, all right? So, that's opening. Flooring is when we take that same level, and now I'm gonna bring my fingers so the whole bottom like this has a bottom clear on the whole thing, right? This one, you don't want a little bottom this big. When you have a big, otherwise your bottom will be really thick. So I'm going to take and 
pull my fingers towards me at that same level to create a floor. Mm. We call this the floor of the pot. You see how this outer edge is out past the bottom edge? If I tried to pull up my walls at this point, this thing would be like that movie Ghost. It'll start going all over. It's hard to control. So we're going to take your hands and collar. I try to like tell you to keep this really straight, like, and we're gonna, like two boards, and we're just going to tip them in and touch our thumbs together and hold still, relax, and let go gently. Now this is smaller. Do you see that? <laughs> So, can you do this with your, with your finger? Can you wrap on your right hand, wrap your finger around your thumb? I want the thumbnail just grazing over the top, and the knuckle of your, of your thumb, lock it down. You know how if you stood up and put your knees back and lock your legs? I'm locking that down. I'm telling you how to create a strong tool with your hand. This way, this doesn't move. If this is up, I've got a springy tool. I want a strong tool. Because now we're using this part of my knuckle right here, my first finger. If you've ever scooped ice cream, that's what we're going to do. We're going to scoop ice cream to begin with. See how I went up underneath there? And then we're going to pull up the walls. But let me tell you what I'm doing with the rest of my fingers. I've got two fingers on the inside, right across from my knuckle. My knuckle's going to be at this angle. My other hand is right here. This is a wall. My hands, my elbows are locked, my hand is locked in here. So then it's all about pulling this up evenly, not pushing too hard. Remember, your outside hand, your right hand is all the muscle. The left hand is just a wall, and that's so you can create a cylinder. If you're too strong with your inside hand, you're going to end up with a bowl in no time. A lot of, a lot of, I don't know why they do this, I don't know, maybe you know, Jesse, they go and try to put... They put bricks underneath the wheel. You've seen them, those bricks underneath the wheel? They're hurting themselves. They actually need to be on a taller stool. They need to be over their pot, not beside it. You have no strength doing this. Uh, unless they're, I've always seen people stand in the I haven't seen anybody do just little bricks. Yeah, they put bricks. I mean, I could see putting a brick on the floor and putting your foot up on it yeah. so you can brace on your knee, but you have short legs, but. <laughs> okay, a good potter will pull the total height of the pot out in about three pulls. So there's two. Notice I keep putting water on it, sucking it out of the center. So we are, um, if you have too much water in the bottom, it will eat its way through. And you want to keep the walls lubricated. So it's a constant process of sucking it out, putting it on. You see, you always have this little bit of clay down here you can't get off. So I'm going to show you how to cut it off. And if you trim your bottoms, if you learn how to trim your bottoms from me, this is going to take trimming up to a new level. It'll be really easy. So if you hold this like a pencil. So I've got that wooden stick. Remember, this was the sculptor's thumb that we looted with. So we're going to take this end of it now, hold it like a pencil with the blade up towards the pot, grab the other hand up here. So you look at your inside form your outside form. What was our, what would, I said, rule of thumb, how thick should your pots be? A quarter. Yeah. About a quarter. So I want to try to eyeball and keep my walls all about a quarter of an inch. All right? So that's why I look at the inside and then look at the outside. And I go slow when I come out. Most people, they don't, they're so afraid they don't take enough off. Then turn the blade over so you're up underneath, go up and touch the pot with the tip of the, the blade, stop the wheel. And then you can just pick this extra piece off. This can go right in your bag. All right? I'm going to put all my goodies right here. All right. So now I've got just a cylinder. There's a couple ways we can shake. I'm going to show you how to choke on this one. So if we choke, I'm not making a U. I'm making an O with my hand. Okay? So we're going to go. And I'm not clear down here. So if I had this was the belly of the pot, and I'm choking for a collar. So I'm going in, up, so cool. and out. In, it's like mega magic, isn't it? I just love it. I never have any, I never get tired of going. I just love it. So if it wasn't even, you can trim it off. Let me show you. I just did that and I should have pulled it. Okay. So I'm going to support my walls. I'm going to let the pin tool, tool score it. I want the tool to lay beside your fingers so then when you close these fingers, you'll take a ring off. I'm not 
stabbing myself and I'm not fishing. <laughs> so I'm going to side it, close my fingers, and I got this little ring on. So, so this is called choking. So I can come way in, right? And as this wall gets smaller, it gets thicker, so you can pull up. Look at, I'm pulling up with just my finger. Another way of pulling up might be this way. The more you do, the more you realize. If I jump on this side, I just ran my fingers right through to the clay. So you don't want that, right? We have, eventually, if you're a beginner, you might get to use the rib eventually. But I would get to know your other tools first. The rib looks really fun, but it's slippery and it can cut you. So <laughs> it's like a real sharp edge here. But if I hold it, there's several ways of holding it. This lets it slide by and I can shape it. So if I shape it like this, it's going to belly it out. If I do this, it's going to cut the clay. So between this and this, see the different angles I can put on, on the pot? So I'm between this and this, I'm going to show you both ways. If I have my hand on the inside, remember before I said my inside hand was my wall? Here's my wall. Here's my power. I just switched it up because I'm going to push the clay out now because I want to shape it. So my inside hand pushes out. It's always an upward motion. I'm starting low, coming up, coming up, coming up. Okay, look at this tool. It's really cool. It's got a flat versus a curve to it. So if I hold it here, I've got a little collar. So I can create a collar. Now I want to curl. Let's say if I want to make this like a little spit tune shape, I can just bring this out. Around that one. When you pulled it out, what did the what did your fingers look like on the inside? How are they? Following it up. Mm -hmm. um, that was a good question. So, but it's, the clay is really soft. If I wanted to, I can make a picture of it. The clay is very soft. So you can get very creative with it, have fun, and you could take and maybe you've seen like that in, in some Indian pottery. You can make little wiggles, whatever, right? So when it's time to take this off, Let's say you're all done, you got that cleaned up. Then you take your wire and you're going to crank this around your hand and pull it right underneath. You want to be able to, if it's, if it's kind of wet, put it in front of the fan, rotate it about every three minutes, pull the wire underneath it. You'll probably have to pull it through again. And then we want to take it off the bat if you can. Now if you have a plate or a platter, there's no way you're going to take it off the bat. But there's a nice little note of, of please. Please do not store work on bats. So you want to, because we run out in, a, in the classes, so some of these classes can go through tons of bats, and if everybody had bats on their shelves, you wouldn't have enough. And if you are able to bring some like little pieces of plywood to put them on, that's awesome. One thing I do is I put a little water here, run the water underneath it, okay? These are called pot lips. You'll find them hanging up there by the sink. So if I go up underneath, give it a twist, slide it, pick it up, and then you can take it over to a bat, a board, a different piece. Pull one out, instead of taking your hand and destroying it, this can slide right underneath this side, Oops. slide it right underneath, and then you've got it on another board, all right? It's really easy, if you put it underneath the fan, 10 minutes, you can pick it up like this and move it without destroying the shape. Now, if you have a bowl, it's going to be a little easy, harder, so use the pot list, right? I'm going to do, oh, I was going to show you one more thing before I do this. Okay, the rule of thumb is that I want to see about a quarter of an inch. That's my, my goal in life, right? So, you see it's still a little thick. All that I cut off down here, I've still got a little thickness. And no matter what I do, I, I still have that. So, it's, it's a learning it's a learning curve. If I if it got too skinny here though, and I tried to shape it, the pot would collapse. So I, I want to leave a little bit here because next week I'm going to show you how to tool or trim your a foot on the bottom. No, oh, it should be more like this. And we're going this is like a cross section. We're going to learn how to tool the bottom because everything, even this old can, sits on a foot. A foot is this rim, the ridge that it sits on. All right, so we're going to trim it like this. I'm going to throw another one to show you how to do a different technique and, and make like a, a quick little bowl.